One of the big issues with water, there's a large number of, of pollutants in the environment that are a little bit recalcitrant to traditional uh, treatment methods and municipal water treatment. Things like uh, pharmaceutical products, personal care products, um, detergents, uh, various pesticides, herbicides, and so on. The adsorption operations or iron exchange type operations are, are, are well used in the industries for some of these applications. The typically iron exchange type processes, what we have is a, an operation in which you, ionic species will be adsorbed onto the iron exchange resin. And that's fine until such time as you saturate the exchange resin, you've now got to regenerate it and remove those species you've, you've uh, adsorbed. And you normally do that by adding some other chemicals, some other ionic species. Uh, or have a pH change, or maybe change even the solvent if you're looking at protein type operation and things like that. Um, but, but this all means that you've got some chemical uh, um, inventory that you need, and also means that you end up with a, um, a, a additional chemical waste you have to treat, worry about. And we were wondering, are there ways in which we can avoid these kind of issues just simply by using electrical means, as we discussed earlier, in which we can apply a potential, activate the ion electrodes, they'd absorb, and then uh, when you want to desorb the ions that we've captured, uh, deactivate the electrodes and kick off the uh, adsorbed components. So we've been developing these electrode type systems that can do exactly that. So really what we have is an ion exchange type operation that we can control though with electrical impulses rather than by chemical addition. The primary challenge of course is to make sure that we've got as robust a, uh, a, an electrode system as possible. We really need to work under thousands of cycles to make it a, a valuable operation. And it's important that the electrodes themselves be um, as robust as possible. These electrodes are coated with what are redox active type systems that can be charged or discharged depending on the actual potential that you have. And this is how we get the, uh, the ion exchange capability. Either when it's charged up, it can capture ions. When it's discharged, it'll release the ions. Uh, so that's uh, the major issue we have to face here. Not, not thing is that some of the systems we've looked at um, have a very high selectivity for various things, carboxylates, phosphonates, sulfonates, and things like that, which are ubiquitous in these micropollutant operations. We've been able to remove micropollutants in the um, sub-millimolar range almost quantitatively, even though there might be a 300 or fourfold excess of other ions in solution. So we've been quite quite pleased about that kind of uh, selectivity that we've been able to get in these systems. Well, the MIT environment is a really vibrant environment. And basically there's a lot of cross-cutting research going across the, the Institute as a whole. There's strong encouragement to be collaborative across all, all sectors of the, of the Institute, all schools and, and, and departments. Uh, the things like the industrial liaison program being very, very valuable in terms of introducing people We've met a number of company folk that have been quite interested in what we're doing, and this has led to collaborations and things like that. I also want to point out is my role as the director of the School of Chemical Engineering Practice. I've had uh, some fortunate, uh, I've had some good fortune in meeting people uh, from various companies that have expressed a strong interest in the program once they hear about it, and are willing to host our students. In this particular program, we have students that groups of about eight or nine working at a company for two months at a time on specific high-level high projects. And uh, when companies hear about uh, what we can do, they get very interested in it. And the ILP has introduced us to a number of companies like that. Of course, you also have JWAS, we've got the MIT Energy Initiative, we've got the Environmental Solutions Initiative. All of these help foster these kinds of uh, uh, collaborations. So we can really focus on meaningful problems.